I suppose we have to start. Uh, we'll speak about uh, data governance in 10 minutes, which is quite uh, easy. So let's start now. Um, and of course, it's big data governance uh, with Neo4j. Um, first of all, let me uh, introduce myself. I am Nicolas Rouillère. I am a big data architect at uh, Orange Company, the telco operator in France. Uh, I am based in uh, Toulouse, in the southwest of France, uh, where you have uh, very comfortable sofas to play the console and also ping pong tables. Um, and uh, my role is to uh, design uh, big data applications and also to train people on uh, NoSQL and big data technologies. Um, I am also co-writing a book on Neo4j in French. So if you like French or if you understand French, um, there is a good book on uh, discovering Neo4j, which uh, has been already issued. And uh, the next one is due on uh, September 13 for Grave de Paris. And it, it's about uh, exploiting, operating Neo4j. Uh, so that's the end of the advertisement time. And then we talk about the subject, big data governance. Uh, I am quite a vampire about uh, images. So uh, if I find uh, during uh, previous Graph Connect great images, I reuse them without the permission. And uh, so sorry, Mark Kfarmer, but um, uh, your image is very good. The challenge uh, regarding big data is uh, try not to fail it and somehow uh, putting together big data clusters uh, without reflecting on uh, how to, um, uh, to gain value and how to uh, understand all the uh, big data governance uh, challenges uh, can, can, can be a mess. So, but when we talk about big data governance, uh, it's very large, you know. Uh, it's about uh, managing people's roles and rights uh, on data. It's about uh, auditing the data flows uh, managing the logs, uh, showing uh, what are the processes, the security processes across the company, um, finding who is responsible for what, uh, who has done what with your data. And you have to answer the question because of GDPR, the famous uh, regulatory law, uh, which is uh, more strict than before and which will be in place uh, by... Uh, May 2018, so it's tomorrow. Another reuse uh, about uh, uh, turning your information system upside down. Uh, it was uh, last, uh, last year, uh, Schleich company demonstrated that uh, when you have historical uh, data silos and uh, your challenge is to understand how those data are connected together, uh, then you, you want to, uh, to put metadata over them and then connect them together. But sometimes uh, it's not worth it and you have to, uh, to come from the beginning and uh, reverse the slide. Sometimes it's easy to do it in PowerPoint but not in real life. And uh, connect the data together from the beginning and then build your uh, application on top of them. And sometimes, such as for Schleich, there are good surprises. Uh, that means that some applications are not useful anymore. Um, then about uh, big data architectures, let's dig into the technologies. Um, there are a lot, lot of them. There are the historical ones, the big data lake with the elephant, the Hadoop elephant, which is designed for storage and uh, batch processes. Um, there is a, the SMAC, uh, a SMAC architecture with uh, Spark, Mesos, Akka, Cassandra, and Kafka, uh, which is more designed for data analytics. Then there are two sisters, Lambda and Kappa, um, uh, more designed for real-time recommendations. And then you have, finally, your etc. Uh, architecture, which is yours and which is a mix of it all, and uh, which is very uh, personal to your uh, enterprise information system. The challenge is that uh, when your uh, firm begins to, uh, to be more mature about big data, 
they want to change from the Hadoop elephant to other architectures and mix them together while enforcing data governance and it's, uh, it can be quite complicated. The idea is that uh, the elephant was made for slavery. So you don't have the, to be the slave of the elephant. It's the same for data governance. I mean that the data governance system must be uh, inherently connected and then uh, this is a commander for the whole big data architecture and processes. So the, the idea is that the data governance system uh, connects data together, enforces and manages uh, the policies, the rights, the processes, the metadata and the, the data connections and then uh, is able to deploy uh, thanks to the many connectors from the O4J with the big data ecosystem, um, then it, uh, it's able to deploy uh, the big data architectures, algorithms, and workflows. Is that okay? Till there? Only four minutes to go. Um, some use cases to, um, to be really matter of fact. Um, for example, you can uh, try and design a complete data model connecting uh, data and entities together and uh, importing uh, this model into Neo4j, which is quite easy to, um, uh, to do with such connectors as a GraphML, GraphML connector. Um, if you have designed your, your model with a GraphML tool, GraphML compatible tool, you can export it and uh, import it into Neo4j within an, uh, an APOC procedure call and it's uh, very, uh, very easy. You can also enforce security policies within Neo4j and then export them to the slave systems. What we will dig upon is about uh, controlling the data flows. There is an example with uh, Apache NiFi. I don't know if you, uh, if you know that. Um, this is a great uh, Apache tool uh, to connect data sources together and try to implement, thanks to uh, uh, processors, each of those uh, entities uh, in, the, in the graphic are processors. Um, and uh, by connecting those processors together, you build an entire and complex data workflow. Um, when exporting uh, those uh, workflows, it's a very nested uh, XML file and uh, the, the depth of the XML file makes your Cypher query quite complicated. But we can do it. So I, I will just show you an example of uh, empty graph. There is nothing in the graph. Then uh, I will create the processor nodes from the XML uh, with a bit complicated query. So uh, I call the APOC procedure load.xml. Then I have some transformation to do because uh, there are nested information. So I have to unwind them and uh, unwind them again and so on uh, so that I, I find the, uh, the leaves uh, of the XML document, and then I am, uh, I am able to, uh, to create uh, a processor node within the graph and return it uh, in the Neo4j da database. Why is it so important to, uh, to do that? Because you, you are able to, to control from your uh, original uh, data governance uh, system which data flows are uh, able to pass through your information system. And uh, as far as uh, big data architectures are very different from one another, um, we have to, uh, to enforce uh, global policies uh, towards all those data systems uh, which must be slaves and not, uh, uh, and not conversely. You, you don't have to be the slave of your big data system. Ah, uh, seems it's uh, like my conclusion. 
there was something more about it. Oh yes, we can keep it touched together if the subject uh, uh, interests you. And uh, I'm pretty much uh, concerned about uh, having Fika with you if you want to discuss the subject more deeply. Thank you very much. <laughs>